Sub Ninja shows you the waveform of the track that allows you to focus on the bass frequencies. As I drag it all the way down, you'll see more and more of the bass. This area under 100 Hz is really where all the foundation of the music that you make lies. And Sub Ninja will show you the loudness of everything in balance, but also how long every element is taking. The length of each kick drum, the length of the bass notes in between, and if my sidechain is doing what I want it to do. Let's compare this to the spectrum analyzer. Below this little green button is what's under 100 Hz. We can clearly see that there's not enough detail in a region under 100 Hz. With the sub view in Sub Ninja, I can actually see how loud all my elements are, how long they are, and how they pulsate over time. Say for example, you had a really low frequency, about uh, 14 hertz. I don't even hear this sound in my speaker. So if we add that signal, this is what it looked like. If we unmute that track, we can right away clearly see that there's some stuff going on. If we actually had the warning set to 40 hertz, it would also start showing up. We check this one out and then turn that warning frequency on, set it to 40 hertz. One of the bass notes in the loop is going too low. But those frequencies here are 33 hertz. Oh, this is actually where I will jump up an octave and no longer have that problem. The kicks are actually a little bit longer and not super compressed. That ending we don't really need, so let's chop some of that sample off and just make our track a little bit tighter. The kick doesn't overlap with the bass anymore. Again, Sub Ninja will help us out greatly just to see right away what the compression is doing to our bass levels. 